going now, all right? So we're going to use our knowledge of stress and pore pressure to help determine if faults will slip, okay? And so remember stress is coordinate frame dependent, okay? And the way we're always going to characterize or, you know, be given the stress essentially is in terms of the principal stresses, because those are the easiest ones to measure, right? And some direction, typically the direction of SH max. So, and of course, then we know the vertical, we know the, the vertical stress is another principal stress, which is always down, okay? So, uh, so then we'll, we'll have sort of a coordinate frame in which our principal stresses lie, okay? But, the frame, the, you know, what we what we want to do is how do we get the stress that's sort of in some arbitrary frame? It's not, I mean, it's not it's not arbitrary in the sense that you can choose it arbitrarily, but it's not aligned with certainly not aligned with a fault, right? So you have a fault that could be arbitrary aligned. You have some knowledge of the principal stresses, and basically we want to figure out what the stress is on the fault on the plane of the fault, okay? So in order to do that, in order to get there, we're going to use an intermediate frame. Okay, so we're going to take the stresses from our principal direction, coordinate frame, how we measure them, and we're going to take them into a geographic frame. Okay, and it turns out that there's some, so there's something nice about this. I mean, you can think of the geographic frame as sort of the, the inertial frame. It's, it's the reference frame in which all other reference frames are relative to, right? And the, and the reason is, if you understand this, if you understand how to take the principal stresses into the, grid, into the geographical frame first, and then we'll take them onto a fault, but later we're going to do wellboard geomechanics, and you could have a wellboard that's drilled in any arbitrary direction, and we want to get, we want to know the stress in the wellbore. Again, we're going to take our principal stresses into the geographic frame, and then into the wellbore. So at least this part right here is really important to understand, because Going from the principal stresses to this geographic frame, we'll use throughout the throughout the course, okay? And so, um, our geographic frame, our geographic frame, is going to be essentially a frame that is north, east, and down. And the reason is, you know, we want to use a positive compression sign convention all the time. So we really want down to be one of our axes, right? And so then we could choose the other one sort of arbitrarily. North seems like a reasonable assumption because we always kind of start northeast, southwest, right? So we also need a right-handed coordinate frame, right? So you remember right-handed coordinate frames from statics, right? So like if I, if I stick my fingers you take your right hand and you stick your fingers in the direction of north. So let's, which, which direction is north? I'm lost inside the building. Okay, right, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna take my hand and stick it in the direction of north, okay? So my fingers in the direction of north. And I wanna curl my fingers to the east, right? But, you know, if I just curl my fingers like that, I'm pointing west, right? So I really need to turn my hand over, or turn my hand over. Stick my fingers in the, in the direction of the north and curl my fingers to the east, and my thumb points in the direction of down. Right? So I have a right-handed coordinate frame. Right? North, curl my fingers to the east, and my thumb points down. That's how you do cross products, right? You take your right hand, I cross J, and your thumb is pointing in the direction of K. Right? So the same thing here. We want a right-handed coordinate system. So we're going to use north, east, and down. Okay. Um, we'll sort of come back to this, but you know, ultimately we have a we'll have a fault, right? And the fault is with reference to some geographic coordinate system. In, in this case, you know, it's just it's sort of the opposite, southeast and up. Okay, that's also right-handed. Right? We're going to use northeast and down, but in this picture you have southeast and up, and and so then you're going to have some your fault, which we'll come back to. Okay, but just so you know, like. Our fault is going to be with reference 
to our geographic frame, and we're going to characterize this fault by a strike. Right? So the strike is sort of the direction of the fault. So let's see if you have a, if I can draw maybe a little bit better fault. So this is your foot wall. So this right here is the strike. Okay. And so uh, so everybody okay? So to see how this so this is your foot wall and hanging wall and then this line is the strike. Okay. So that's your strike. And then so the dip of the fault is gonna be Dip dip is going to be this angle, okay? So that's it's the angle from horizontal to the plane, okay? And <coughs> just remember, if, if you do this correctly, it'll it will always be an acute angle. Well, we actually solve a problem, I'll, I'll point out. But it's always going to be an acute angle, right? Because you could measure it from the other way, too, but it would be an obtuse angle. Right? And then so on this figure, the rake is sort of the hardest thing to see. Um, the rake is the, the, the direction of slip with respect to the strike. And the, th the thing to, to notice here, I mean, if, you know, the way I've drawn this, you might think of this as like a purely, if, you, if this is purely a strike slip, right? So if, if this wall is moving that way and this wall is moving that way, and they're purely strike slip, right? The rake is zero. But you could, I mean, everything, nothing's purely strike slip, purely normal fault is purely zero. So, it, 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 you know, if the hanging wall is moving, not, you know, purely strike slip, but also has some direction up or down, then that, that would be the rake. Right? So it'd be sort of, you know, if, this, if this guy is moving, kind of, it's, it's motion is kind of along but down, then that would be the rake. But we'll come, we'll, we'll come back to this when we, when we go get ready to solve a problem. I mean, uh, more in the, in the near term, I just wanted to sort of point this out, is that we need to go from whatever, whatever coordinate frame our stresses are given to us in into this geographic frame, because the, then our faults are always going to be relative to the geographic frame. That's how they're defined. You, know? you have a strike to the northeast, 30 degree dip. Like that's, how, that's how we describe faults in, in geology. Strike to the west, 20 degree dip. Strike to the southwest, 60 degree dip. Okay. So that's how we're going to be given fault information. And so we need to get, that's, that, those are with respect to a ge geographic frame. So let's get our stresses into the geographic frame. 